Good afternoon and welcome back to the program. It's the touchline. And of course, this time around, it's the fans on the fan favorite segment where we discuss international football. The impact of coronavirus, also known as uh, COVID-19, has been so massive to an extent that several tournaments, championships, leagues have been suspended to... Oh, further notice, English Premier League being the latest, of course, being suspended until April 3rd. And now, the chances of Liverpool being crowned the champions are in limbo. I don't know what will happen. Tottenham and West Ham pushing for, you know, nullification of the league so that it's null and void, so that it can start uh, new and fresh. Of course, I'm with Masi Sony, who is the, you know, novice coming up very well under my tutelage. <laughs> and, and Joe Zaina, uh, the familiar face on the show, Fred Openda, is still with us. Masi, good to have you on board. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Um, I'm fine, thank you. And um, I'm happy to be in the show once again. Joe, United fans are also happy. Uh, of course, not happy that COVID-19 is with us, but mm. happy that, you know, Bruno Fernandes is finally the man they were lacking and, you know, he's brought a lot of changes in the team. We've seen, we've seen since his departure, United recording good performance. Since his arrival, there have been good performances. Um, since was, his arrival. Yeah, he was the final jigsaw in the puzzle, I believe. Because uh, there was a void between the midfield and the attacking. Also, the supply chain to the attacking to the attacking front end, mm -hmm. being the left uh, attacking forward, right attacking forward, and the central, central forward. So, I think, and also the idea of him always wanting to run forward, always wanting to be in the box, always wanting to be on the final end of that ball to score, to score I think was quite important because that hunger ceased to exist. We, we can't take away anything from Fred, we can't take anything away from McTominay, we can't take anything away from Lingard, okay? But you need to execute these finishes. I think we were talking with Fred earlier on about how you can have the hunger but you're not executing. And he, he gave us an example of David James, of, of sorry, yeah, James, whereby he's not he, he's not having that hunger to score, yes, but he's having all these runs that he's making. So for Bruno to come in and not only change the gameplay of Manchester United to a fast-paced, attractive game, and also to score goals that were really needed when the attacking front end were not uh, bringing them in is quite important. Quite important. Uh, Fred Openda, of course we have a lot of headlines to discuss about. One of them is the impact of COVID-19. We are, had earlier on talked about it at length, but now the latest, uh, you know, Bundesliga also suspended. I think uh, the suspension has uh, come uh, from the news, uh, uh, after the news that, you know, some of the players are... Uh, in the big leagues have come into contact with the with the virus and you know uh, you never know that's what we were saying you never know where you're gonna contact this uh, virus we saw uh, the other day the Arsenal manager Mikel Ateta was uh, attested positive of the virus uh, Odoi uh, the Chelsea winger did test uh, test positive of the virus so it's 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 better it's good for you uh, for humanity uh, just to uh, suspend these uh, these games because these are the games as we, uh, we were saying sport brings people together even if you're going to uh, play uh, these games uh, indoors what if there's a case of a player uh, that maybe has come into contact with the virus so it's better we suspend these legs and um, maybe uh, in two three weeks uh, then we, we might uh, might be able to 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 get which which way forward uh, uh, Jose Ina was speaking about uh, Bruno Fernandes I think it's he's something else that uh, United have been missing in that midfield. Uh, he's creating chances, he's scoring goals, although some of them from the penalty spot. But they are goals, and he's he's been able to supply. He's been a good the, that link that was missing that supply chain of United from that midfield to the, the attacking. And I think he's gonna uh, actually. They don't even feel. Do you miss? Paul Pogba? <laughs> just, 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 just before we get into that uh, particular aspect of Paul Pogba's absence and arrival of Bruno Fernandes, Liverpool have been the favourite since the season started. They have been on the verge of being crowned champions for 19th time. And now this pandemic of COVID-19 uh, seems like it's uh, causing Liverpool fans sleepless nights because in the event that this situation escalates further, of course we're not praying that it goes further, we're hoping that it will end soon, but in the event that it escalates, 
the league might be declared null and void. We've seen English Premier League management saying that they will have a meeting on Thursday to review the way forward on whether uh, the league should progress or it should be terminated. Would that be too unfair to Liverpool, considering their consistent... Their consistent wins. Um, I think for Liverpool fans would be so unfair for them but for the other teams especially um for other teams i think it's especially would arsenal because <laughs> arsenal can, <laughs> That's can be given the arsenal. title <laughs> on alphabetical <laughs> order yeah but <laughs> i think <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I th yeah but it will it's so bad for them it's so bad for them but i think it, it will at least give other chances other teams an opportunity you know but um i would say they've already had their victory i mean they're almost coming to the point of you know beating arsenal 49 matches unbeaten and that 37 so the 12 ones are uh, maybe they'll recover next time they will recover next yeah. time joe from where you sit objectively speaking uh, if uh, you will be asked to give your advice to the management of english premier league mm -hmm. football what will it be? Well, I'll have a word with the Football Association and tell them, to be honest, um, Liverpool have played their socks off this season. Um, I'm a Manchester United supporter, but I have to agree that some of the football they've been playing was quite beautiful. Um, the last one month, however, has been detrimental. So by us saying, uh, call the league null and void, you're talking about close to 700 or 800 hours of football play by some of the greats like Salah, uh, Mane, you know, um, <coughs> For being you know, all those guys and tell them you know what your uh, your trials this season um, basically useless that would be that would be bad I think if it stops now let it stop where the table is it is rightfully theirs the, champ the Premier League Championship is rightfully theirs and let's start the next season but not to say that you know, declared none and void. I, I believe that would be a wrong move by the Football Association. You know, the declaration of null and void comes on the basis of, right now as you speak, we don't know uh, unless the Football Association says, as it stands, the top four qualify yes, to Champions League that's football, that's football. Oh. then those in relegation are officially relegated. But also, you see, they have a point to argue. They will say, no, yeah. this is not official. Well, yeah. Liverpool have taken the title. So for, what Liverpool, you do, for Liverpool, so from, maybe April it's second, justified. from April 2nd, what you do, now you start playing the rest of the games, especially for the bottom three clubs that are about to be relegated. Look at the difference in points between number 15 and number 18. Before you go forward and say, you know what, Actually, and we remember we had this point-based system whereby if you get to 40 points, 40, 42 points, then you're, not you're guaranteed that you're not going to be relegated. So now, play those few, few, few games and then look at the teams that can be relegated. But you cannot say that don't give Liverpool and also the rest of the three still remain in the Premier League. I no, think, the Championship will I have think, a problem with that. I think uh, from where I stand, rules are rules. And if the season is declared null and void, then, uh, okay, it will be, let's say, not fair to Liverpool because really uh, they have performed this season. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are not talking about only Liverpool in the EPL. We have 20 teams. Uh, we have the top four to talk about. We have the Europa League uh, qualifications. We have the relegations. So we can't go on and That's let's say... Maybe, maybe <laughs> not. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. But... but uh, if you look at uh, the other teams, and just uh, maybe, uh, let's, if, if Liverpool, let's say, for example, had won the league last season, we would not actually be having that discussion, you know, it would be unfair and all that. It's because it's been long since they won that league. Uh, so if, if really they come, uh, they discuss and find it, uh, you know, let's just uh, declare this league an, uh, null and void. Let's go back. They, they, they have a team. Let's go back. Let's uh, uh, look up to next season. Let they them perform the again. <laughs> Let them perform again and Without prove us wrong. Eh? Yeah. Next season. So no. I, I think if they declare it an and void, it will be for everybody. Not that, you know, Liverpool are almost winning it. And since they have two more wins to, to, to just uh, to, to win the league. But if you look at Liverpool's form in the last... Uh, that's an argument from an outsider, for example. Uh, uh, in the last month, it's been a downward sp uh, spiral. So someone may come uh, and say, you know, you, you, why are you giving Liverpool? Because they, they look like they are going to lose some they of these matches. They lost to Watford in the Premier League. I'm saying their form. 
okay. generally their form. So, 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 so uh, Masi, <laughs> this coming in the wake of you know Liverpool disastrous one month campaign. Remember, the unbeaten run was brought to a halt by a relegation threat and what for three nil demolition it was. Then uh, on Wednesday, getting beaten by Diego Simeone's charges, Atletico Madrid yeah, getting eliminated from Champions League football. Maybe they were looking forward emulating on Real Madrid to defend the title consecutively. Chelsea, FA. maybe should should do you think <laughs> Liverpool? Are, do you think Liverpool are praying that this ought to have come uh, before their miseries? Um, obviously, because their record seems tarnished. Yeah, slightly though. Like just like he said, in the recent matches they've been going downwards. But uh, first, looking at the match with Atletico Madrid, I think uh, for me, for me, what it stands out, uh, I think Klopp is very wrong in the statement that he made that the fact that Sol and Morata and the other players were. Were, were defending for me the match for, uh, for for me the match was very realistic these guys played their way out through the win and as you can see for now uh, for now i think liverpool has a very big hole like it's going downwards that's true but again i wouldn't say that this thing should just be stopped and say that uh, it's null and void i agree that they should be given the opportunity they've played well throughout the season we can all agree and everybody knows liverpool has been to the top but again the, 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 the game is going downward. The game is going downward. Jugend Klopp's remarks that Atletico played improper football <laughs> and that they have world-class players mm -hmm. who didn't, you know, play professionally. <laughs> is that kicks of a dying horse? You know, uh, in uh, football there is a strategy. Jose Mourinho used to park bus <laughs> behind throughout mm -hmm. 90 minutes, then eventually is the winner. And I think that's a strategy. Arsenal plays their sexy football yeah, all they want, but they are trophyless. I think, that, I think it's, it's, quite, <laughs> it was, it was quite unprofessional from him. Um, you know, at the end of the day, as a head coach or as a manager, you go into those 90 minutes and you apply your tactics. However, the other coach wants to play, okay? If you lost the game because they were defending eight people and only two were up front, and also sometimes the keeper would become a defender, it is up to Diego Simeone's tactics. At the end of the day, he came to Anfield and he told his men, you know what, we are going to go to war. And they went to war. And however you're going to win the war, they will not remember how many bullets he used. It is the war that you won. Yeah, and and again, Simon was he was even so happy. It like he wasn't even ready for what his boys would do. Yeah, yeah he, he, wasn't he wasn't ready. ready. He wasn't ready because he was jumping all over. Like, what is happening? And I, I think the added minute was just a magical moment. It's something that no one expected. Everybody thought the game is done. Liverpool and is and it out. And it also shows the the characters of the Liverpool players. The last goal by Alvaro Morata. There was no character in the Liverpool squad. They had given up already at Anfield. So don't blame Diego Simeone for playing, I don't know, five, eight at the back and one out, Diego, two up Diego, front. No, 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 no. He played his game plan and it worked. And he's going forward now to the quarters. Diego, That's it. Diego Simeone came to Anfield knowing that, you know what, I'm going to get outplayed here. So yes. my, my game plan is this. Let me pack the bus, okay, be solid at the back and try to get the chances, the, the few chances uh, the uh, on the counters and, and that is it. And this is a game uh, everyone plays when they go away, look at Mourinho and he's won titles with it. So that's, I think he, he was, that's a crybaby, if I can put it, a cry a crybaby character. So it's just, it's just a matter of accepting and, you know, say what the, the best team one. Team one. Yeah. We've seen we've seen you know versions by uh, various former football greats, the likes of Alan Shearer, Michael Owen, you know, giving their thoughts on uh, how Liverpool, the campaign Liverpool has had throughout this particular season in comparison with, you know, the football we watched some time back. We've seen, you know, comparison of the current Liverpool squad to the Invincibles of Arsenal that finished the season and beaten to the 1999 Man United squad that, you know, uh, managed to win a treble FA English Premier, Premier League title and Champions League as well to the Real Madrid squad that managed to win three Champions League consecutive titles to under Zinedine Zidane. You know, a lot of comparisons. Joe, that brings us to the question. What will, your, what will be your, you know, greatest squad or team ever? I, I think I'll have to go with two squads. Um, <laughs> I, was actually, I was actually doing my research earlier and one of the squads, and I know 
not many of the viewers would remember this team, but you would remember actually, was the Nottingham Forest team between 1977 to 1980. And um, you see, when you talk uh, about Nottingham Forest, they playing in the championship, yeah, but, but they are two-time UEFA Champions <laughs> League winner, <laughs> and like some team. No, 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 no. <laughs> don't go that way, don't go that way. Because now, don't attack me. Uh, protect me, please. Uh, no, some team can be Tottenham. No, no, no. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be necessarily actually, yes, no. actually, you're attacking me and Mercy. No problem. <laughs> All right, Joe, proceed. <laughs> so, so yeah, if, you, if you look at that team under Brian Clough, the greatest achievement, not only was it the two-time Champions League win and also a League Cup win, but you're looking at they, uh, they were promoted from the Championship and immediately the yes. next season went and won the League. Okay, so and it, you can compare that. They didn't have that much money that some of these clubs have right now. But that's, that's time. Yeah. I think everyone no. that didn't have money no. a lot of time. But uh, what did they have? They had skill then. If you're talking about skill, no, we'll talk about the Leicester team later on, where, which came and won the Premier League with lesser finances than the bigger teams. But for me, the greatest team, and I know our Manchester United support, I think for me, the greatest achievement by a manager was at Nottingham Forest, 1977 to 1980. And then, obviously, I have to be sentimental to the 2006-2009 Manchester United team. Under Sir Alex Ferguson, arguably, yeah, arguably for me the greatest Manchester United team ever. I mean, the starting three: Tevez, Ronaldo, Rooney. You're coming to the midfield. You know, Paul Scholes, Owen Hargreaves. Owen Hargreaves was still there. Darren Fletcher was there. Um, Giggs, Michael Carrick. Uh, Michael Carrick. Giggs was coming back. You're looking at the defense. David of Beckham Martich. on the wings. Ah, David Beckham, Beckham had left for gone, Madrid. Yes. You're looking at you're looking at the defense of Matic, Rio Ferdinand, Patrice Evra on the left, West Brown, John West Brown on the right, and then you're looking, you, you look at but, team, but, but Joe, Joe stop, stop, stop pampering us with names, uh -huh. we know very well, United, uh -huh. I think they just had a, a magician in the manager of Sir Alex Ferguson, no, but, uh, that squad was so average. Darren Fletcher, uh -huh. John Oshia. Did you hear what this guy said? <laughs> <laughs> there was no. That except, team was like some. Wine, Mark Rooney, Cristiano Ronaldo. Look Paul at Paul Scott. They had, they had that, a few that world class players. Yeah. But I think mm -hmm. Mark Jisung, you see. No, you have to have a rotational squad. Yeah. I'm talking about the main First starting 11. 11. I'm not talking about Joe, the rotation give, squad. Give that squad yes. to one of the current managers. He will finish 15th. I think Sir Alex <laughs> Ferguson wow. was just a magician. Tevez, <laughs> <laughs> Rooney, Ronaldo, 15th. <laughs> You're living in a disillusion. You're in a disillusion, I'm this telling is, you. This is a typical Manchester United fan. You, you'll argue all the way out. I will never agree. So, yeah. <laughs> as, as, as for me, I think yes. I'll, I'll go for... Of course, the Invisibles. Uh, but then you talked about Nottingham Forest, eh? uh, a, a, a good squad at that time, and apparently, currently, their owner was also diagnosed with Yeah, the and virus. he's also the owner of Olympiacos. Yes. Olympiacos, yes, and nice, I think. Yeah. Uh, so I think, Tunasema wawgwe pole, because it's something that goes away. Yeah. And for, 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 for the greatest team, I think I'll go for, for the Invisibles, because no one has been able to did do what they did. Did you watch them finish and or you are? Of course. Of Still course. Rolling up. Ah, of well, course. I had a few years in my back. Stopped it. Good, 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 good. Yes. Uh, that team of theories. Uh, we had theory, of course. The mighty theory. We have Bagham, You know, in that midfield, we, we we had Vieira. I've not seen a Vieira. No, not. Uh, no, you cannot. You cannot compare Angolo Kante with Bagham <laughs> Vieira. That's good. Yeah, Gilberto was there. He was there. We had the Lawrence in the defense. We had Campbell. We had Cole. And then in the sticks, we had them. And so I think we had a very, very good squad at that time, which was able to do something that I don't see someone doing again. Not even, not even uh, the Liverpool next season. I don't think so. For now, that's my best squad currently. I have to agree also. <laughs> I have to agree. I mean, Thierry Henry, top scorer, mm -hmm. two seasons back to back. I, I think at that time is when Mourinho was coming in with his Chelsea squad of exactly, 2004. Yes, yes. And uh, that's the time when now we started realizing that a 4-3-3 four, 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 three, three system can actually work. Well, yeah. But for the Invincibles, I have to tip my hat and say that team was awesome. That yeah. team was really great. Uh, Henry and Backamp, that combination. And having... Yeah. Yeah. Now, the, the, the title of the Champions League is what really eluded yes. them. That's what so eluded I, them. Otherwise, if they had won that, that Champions League... They, uh, they would be up there with the group. Exactly. Group. They'll yeah, be up there yeah, with yeah. the Real Madrid. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah. You see, you see, as you keep saying all these big names, Mas is getting surprised because <laughs> she started watching football yesterday, and now she's wondering which team would she give as you know one of the best, Masi. 
Um, if I'm to give teams, of course, I have to support my team, which were unbeaten two or three, two or four. But um, since I've started watching recently, <laughs> as he's saying, let me prove you wrong. Um, I think my team of the decade would be Barcelona in the time of Suarez, Neymar, and Messi. Well, yeah. that looks like a, a debatable as well. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. MSN up front. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a good squad. They have done um, things that. Uh, although I, I think it's a team that uh, Messi uh, carried on his shoulders, <laughs> <laughs> if I can put it so. But it's it's a, it's been a good squad. Uh, uh, Barcelona since the times of. Uh, uh, our favorite inmates, Ronaldinho. Exactly. So I think they've they've they have, they have been good and uh, but now uh, currently there there is debate because if you, look, if you look at that midfield score that they had at that point, you're looking at Iniesta, Xavi, exactly. and Busquets. Oh my God! And and we still have Busquets there. But if you look, they defined the idea of you don't have to have a big midfielder to cover ground. Exactly. You know, you can have Xavi who will be a box to box midfielder. Doesn't have the doesn't have the size. And then you'll have an attacking midfielder like Iniesta. And then Busquets just holding it. I think that's when we really define that midfielders don't have to be a big midfielder. And that's why the likes yeah. of Golo Kante are coming in right now. <laughs> in the <laughs> size of <laughs> yes, Mason Mount are coming in right now. Jack Grealish, James Madison, Bruno. Of Fernandez. Yeah, we've seen yeah. right now in the in the EPL because yeah. it's the game that we watch. We've seen very very good midfielders who are who are very short. Yes. Uh, and and, <laughs> the, and the likes of Ngolo Kanti, as yeah. you're saying, the Mounts. I can see a very good Torreira. Torreira. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, we we can um, uh, come up with that debate. You know, uh, uh, do you have to be big? To be <laughs> a good <laughs> midfielder, so, uh, you know. A few reactions on our social media platforms, especially Twitter and Facebook. Karen, Karen, Karani, Evans Mutiamba is watching, and uh, of course there is another tickling comment here by Annie Lawyer, who is saying she's watching, but Kwani Corona or whatever in affect sports, sana Kwanza gambling. <laughs> 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 I think you can see please your best. Then Aliandro yes. Schwarzenegger Damaria say all my bets have been cancelled, <laughs> and, and the sticks uh, returned back to the. <laughs> to, the, to, the, to the orders of the vets, you know. So it's 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 uh, as, as a, there's a friend of mine of negative impact. Yeah, of course. There's a there's a friend of mine who was telling me yesterday. You know what? All the all, all the games have been cancelled, and then you know you receive those messages from the betting companies. You know, uh, you have won at seven shillings. <laughs> You're going to check. It's all that all the games were cancelled and the odd is one. So you they only return your stake. Oh, yeah. and you still have the congratulations <laughs> message. <messages>. So, <laughs> Ras Bashir Wero Abusia is also watching Outer from Jesus Busia. So Ronaldinho Gaucho is a man who graced football. We all enjoyed, you know, his stylish and you know sexy football during his stint at Barcelona. But right now he's facing a lot of tribulations. As we speak right now, he's in prison. Is still in prison, and I'm reliably informed they will be gracing a football match. He's been signing <laughs> autographs, by the way. Yeah, yeah in prison, I saw that. Messi, uh, but I think it's what said Lionel Messi mm. the, at one time, his teammate will yeah, be yeah. coming to his rescue to ensure that he gets released. He gets out of, but yeah. do you think also footballers, especially those who've been stars, they reun, uh, they they misuse uh, their fame? Stardom. Yeah, I think it was wrong for him to fake those uh, passports. Uh, with his brother, I think, uh, and, and you know the, the law has to take its its course. Even if Messi is saying, you know, I'm gonna to hire, I'm gonna hire uh, the best uh, lawyers from South America, uh, South America to try and and get the, him out of jail, I think it was wrong. It was wrong for him to fake those passports. I had a friend of mine who used to tell me stories of how Anderson Deco, the Portuguese uh, icon, he also played for Barcelona. Reuned, allegedly reuned uh, Gaucho because he used to sneak and attend discos <laughs> <laughs> with, with Gaucho. What normally happens with this, you know, polished, uh, talented footballers? I think I, I would say man management after your career. When you're still in the career, when you're still playing professional football, there's man management from the staff members, you know, from your manager himself, from your own social media manager, you know, someone will ask you, don't go out tonight, tomorrow, there's a training, it will look bad on you. But once you retire, 
You know, no one is taking care of you. At most, you're taking care of yourself, and you have a few sponsors who, you know, are betting on you to just take care of yourself yeah. so that you can go forward. For example, when Adidas had Pepsi under him, yeah, had Nike under him, you know, at some point even Adidas had approached him. So you're looking at a situation whereby no one else is telling you what to do anymore. Um, unfortunately, you've had that fame in your mind for the last 10 to, to 10 to 15 years of playing. So what happens is that you lose focus. And once you lose focus, the world and God teaches you, you know, how it's done out there. Because why fake passports? Why? I mean, you're, the, you, you're a Ballon d'Or winner. You're faking passports to go to Paraguay. Masi, did you watch Ronaldinho play? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. I, 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 I did watch him play in World Cup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, in yeah. World Cup. Yeah. But you've watched some of his videos. Yeah, I've, I've watched some of his videos and he's amazing. Do you think he's the all-time best? Up to now, or it's Messi debatable. and Ronaldo, I, I think it's debatable. It's debatable. Yeah. And also, just I, I just read a few minutes ago, he played a small tournament when he was in jail. Yesterday, yes, and his team won 11 2. 11 2. <laughs> and he must have been doing the you know what? spectacularly. Yes, he was. And do you know the consolation was what they got smoked beef, I know, smoked pork, pork <laughs> as a meal for the inmates for his team. So he's still doing it, he's still scoring goals wherever he goes. You can't take that Even talent away, <laughs> Even in prison, you can't take that talent away. So I think we're gonna wrap because time is not on our side. But before we do, Marcy, no English Premier League, no Arsenal playing, they were supposed to be. Yeah, losing oh today. Yes, I see. We're supposed to beat them. I, uh, oh my goodness! On Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on Wednesday. You know, you know. Uh, I always pity a team that is up to play against a city side that has lost in their previous game, because it since it would have been marauding. No, no, no. Since since Ateta Bailey left City, just check. He's, I think he he was doing a lot of work for City. Someone was since he left. Pep, Pep is afraid of. Ateta. <laughs> maybe. maybe. Uh, truly, yeah, maybe. He was the assistant, so probably he knows all the skills what, yeah. that he was using. I think, by the if you check uh, the, the matches that City have played since Ateta left, fine, they have won, but they have struggled a little bit. Tottenham and West Ham pushing for, you know, uh, 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 nullification of the league. Do you attribute it to the horrible season they have had? But Tottenham has not had a bad season, it though. It hasn't had a bad season. I, th I think it's just that... But West Ham, under, and, under, under David Moyes... Under David Moyes, it's, it's, been, a, it's been a rescue. Um, yeah, by him, by the how many, how many more games would he have rescued and then they don't go into relegation? How many games would Mourinho have rescued for Tottenham to, you know, bounce back to top four? At the end of the day, I think it's a selfish decision from the two clubs to call the Premier League off. No, there has been a lot of work that has gone into this league from September onwards and I think it's very unprofessional of them to call it off. Champions League football City against Madrid was supposed to be played next week, no more. Yeah. But you know, Dortmund against PSG <laughs> <laughs> being played behind closed doors, doors and the celebration of Neymar, oh my goodness. And you know, the ridicule of Haaland. Haaland. I think that was wrong. You know, this kid is a, is a young kid, you know. You, you don't demoralize him by ridiculing him. You know, I think a player like Neymar, you should be above that. Full uh, of your body. Exactly. And for the for the Champions League matches, Champions League, uh, the Europa League, uh, second leg fixtures, which have been called out, it, it's as I said, it's good for humanity. Let's let's cool it down. Um, and actually, it's an advice to us guys in Kenya. If you really don't have to be out there partying and all, just stay indoors uh, for the weekend. City and, and Bayern Munich, are they now the favourites now that you know Liverpool has been eliminated? Uh, they are being tipped I, know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, as the team to watch for this off, Champions League season. I wouldn't call off uh, Real. PSG yeah. also. I wouldn't yeah. call off PSG. I, I watched the game and take, take away the theatrics of Neymar. But I watched how the midfield operated, PSG midfield against a very rampant midfield. Um, Emery Khan got a red card. That is just frustrating at towards the end of the towards game the, though. Towards the end of the game, but the frustration of not just getting the game right in terms of the midfield was a big thing. So you would look at Bayern Munich and possibly Manchester City to be favourites. I would look at PSG getting at least into the semi-finals and pulling a surprise. Are you telling me that if Zinedine Zidane is not going to get his game right, he can surprise Man City at Hatehead? 
Wolves have done that. <laughs> that's why that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's I was time. very careful <laughs> not to say Manchester City are one of the favorites. Bayern Munich, obviously. Yeah, I mean, obviously, obviously their game, be their, their game, and again, they just need to avoid that complacency that they, they normally have towards the final stages of the pre, of the of the Champions League, um, whereby they get eliminated in the quarters, sometimes even in the last of 16. So, but it, it's in on for the taking. Now the champions are out. We have a new champion to crown. New champion to crown Masi. What will you be up to after the show? Now that no English Premier League action, no Arsenal playing this particular afternoon. But good readers because maybe they would have lost terribly. They don't know that. They don't know that. Because I was con I was so confident about the game because Arteta has brought in a lot of a whole energy. You know, brought the fans together. So I think I was really confident about it. You are really confident. Joe, your parting shot in terms of Paul Pogba's comeback. Do you think now his presence alongside uh, Fred and Bruno Fernandes, the new arrival, will steer United to another level? Yes, uh, obviously. Uh, With the upfront trio of maybe Rashford, Martial, and uh, Mason and, Greenwood. And, Mason and there is likelihood that mm -hmm. Jadon Sancho may arrive as well. Joining. Yeah, obviously, there is an air of optimism. When he comes back, that combination, that midfield, midfield combination. But again, I have to state that if he continues with any other theatrics to destabilize a team that is working well so now, I wouldn't be remiss to say that I wouldn't see his use coming back. You want him to leave? If he's coming to destabilize a squad that has been working very hard to get back to where they are right now. Yes. Well, always a pleasure. Gentlemen and our lady, Fred Openda, Joe Saina, Masi Sony, all coming on the show this afternoon to give their thoughts on international football, the impact of coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, on the global sporting activity. Several tournaments, several leagues have been suspended, English Premier League and, you know, Bundesliga being the latest to be suspended until further notice, meaning no proper football match this particular weekend to watch. And therefore, these three think they will just be, you know, uh, staying indoors for the better part of the weekend. <laughs> anyway, it's been a pleasure. Until next time, next Saturday, same time, same place. My name is Max Wasike. Let's get sporty every time and let's continue with the conversation on our social media handles at Wasike Maxwell, hashtag touchline Y254 at Y254 channel. Have a very good weekend and always keep safe and, you know, if possible, put in place proper precautionary measures as far as avoidance of COVID-19. Always a pleasure. God bless you and good weekend.